we're reflecting all morning on the life of not just an extraordinary football manager, an extraordinary coach, but also an extraordinary individual, Eamon, somebody who could do everything apart from coaching and football management. He could do singing, he, could, he was a playwright, he was involved in business to a high level as well. And I want to show you something that's quite fun because his, his singing voice was something that was quite celebrated, I think. And there's an advert we've managed to dig out from the archives. It's uh, Harry Redknapp appearing in uh, a video. I can't remember what the advert's actually for. It's pretty best I don't say anyway. But it's Terry Venables behind the mic singing, doing what he does best. Have a look at this now. Well, we don't know what it was for, but maybe we can find out from somebody who started that ad with him. We say good morning uh, to former uh, Tottenham manager, manager of many, many other clubs, friend of Terry Venables uh, and singing companion there, Harry Redknapp. Good morning, Harry. Aaron, good morning. Good morning, guys. What was the advert for, Harry? Do you remember? Do you know I'm sitting here, Eamon, trying to remember what it was for. I really can't remember. It was, <laughs> that was quite a few years ago. Uh, well, it was a big one. Here. Terry, no, Terry was, Terry, had, Terry was, he could do everything. Was, you know, he, he was a great personality, great character. Footballers loved, players loved to play for him. He was great fun, but also an amazing football coach. So, so forward thinking, great football ideas, you know, a special person. When did you first come across him, Harry? Because you're from a similar part of town, aren't you, over in the east end of, of London? But where did you first encounter Terry? I guess it was from your playing days, wasn't it? Yeah, as, you know, as a young player at West Ham, Terry would have been a few years older, but he was a young player at Chelsea and uh, already broken into the first team at a very early age. And they tell me back in them days, he was organising set plays, free kicks, even though he, when he first broke into the first team, he'd be telling... Tommy Doherty, Dave Sexton, people like that, what they should be doing with us on the set plays, you know? Ted Drew. Uh, that was how he was. He just had this amazing football brain. And uh, I think when you, you listen to the tributes coming in, everybody just enjoyed being around him and just and playing for him. He, he had that personality, just infectious. What was different about the way he thought about football, Harry? Uh, innovative, brilliant. How, how, what was he doing that, say, you know, that, that you haven't done in your career? Well, he was always, always, say, I mean, always coming up with ideas, different ideas, how to play, different, different systems, different little things that he could tweak. But most importantly, I think it was his personality. People loved being around him. He had one of them personalities that people enjoy coming in every day to work for him, train with him. You look at the Crystal Palace video that said, uh, it was a great video out of it and we called Team of the 80s where he was with Malcolm Allison and they were, it was just a great, great, uh, the young players there, Kenny Sands and Vince Hilaire, all them great young players that they produced there. But wherever you go, the England players, I think Euro 96, you know, however he, he lost, his, they didn't keep him on after that, I'll never know because that was probably the most enjoyable time we've had, in a, you know, since Euro 96, since the World Cup win in 66. That time at Wembley when the whole country was behind England, we should have gone all the way and won that competition, but played some great football. And Terry was a manager of that team. And you look at all them players and uh, and when you listen to them now, how much they enjoy being around him. It was fantastic times. And Harry, you touched on it a few moments ago, but what kind of company was he away from the field of play? Oh, great company. He was one of them guys you want to be with. You know, he's he was a fun character. He just loved life. and. You know, you'd always have, he'd get up and sing. He'd love to sing. He'd get up, he opened his own, he had a nightclub in London that he opened at one time. It was called Scribes. <laughs> and uh, I think all the reporters used to get in there, so it was called Scribes. And uh, he'd get up every night and give a few songs. What do you want to make those eyes at me for? Was one of his favourites. But uh, no, everybody enjoyed being with Terry. That was for sure. And uh he, he, as say, they don't make too many like him because he, he had that personality you can't give to people. He was just great, a great football man, but also great fun to be around. 
and a, a, a seemingly natural businessman as well, Harry. Um, he had interests, I mean, from, from writing plays, from writing books, from uh, the screen plays, from being involved in, you, you mentioned the nightclub there as well. Um, do you think he spread himself maybe a bit too thin from that point of view or was it was all that fine? Uh, maybe, maybe. You know what it's like, Damon, you know, because he had a bit of a Cockney accent and people are always a bit of a lad or whatever. You know, what he was was an incredible football man. He he, he wasn't boring. Players didn't come in every day. Oh, my God, what you know, he's going to bore us all to tears today. He's going to come in and, and make training fun, training interesting. We'll learn something today from being around him. Uh, and there's not enough around like that. That was... Yeah, he was special. And you can imagine him and Malcolm Allison, what a team they would have been. They were, I mean, they were incredible together. At Crystal Palace. That's right, yeah. Team. Yeah, that Crystal was, Palace, yeah. yeah, great times, yeah. That was a bit but of a wherever he went, he talked all, the, all them great players that have come out yesterday and said how much they, they loved yeah. him. He was the best coach they worked with. Harry, do you think if they'd won that semi-final in 96, do you think they would have gone on to, to win it? I mean, Germany went up against Czech Republic in the final. It's just... It's just the the great what might have been, isn't it? Oh, for sure. That was a great that was a great time. That was the whole country was enjoying that that Euro '96. Uh, you know, we were all singing "It's coming home, football's coming home." It was it was a great uh, and it was a team that played with it, it typified Terry. It played with no fear. That team it played with fun. It played with it had sort of joy on it. Gaza scoring that goal. You know, lots of managers probably, when Gaza went out and the lads went out, I think they were in, where were they, Hong Kong or somewhere, I don't know, when they went on the tour. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Cup and had a, had a night out that got, that got a bit a bit heavy. Uh, lots of managers wouldn't have, but he didn't, Gaza and that, he got the best out of Paul Gascoigne and the rest of the squad. And when Gaza scored that amazing goal at Wembley and did this celebration, you know, on the floor with he, that was, uh, yeah, that, yeah. that, that was all Terry's personality coming out in that team. Well, happy memories. Harry, thank you for sharing them and paying tribute to your, your friend and colleague. And we really appreciate your time this morning. Harry Redknapp, thank you very much. Always fab to talk to Harry. And Harry, friend of the show as well.